Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver hey guys, now. We're roadtoruta.com. Been a while. Um, was down San Diego celebrating Paige's birthday. Woohoo! Very fun. Um, she's doing very well down there. Okay. Uh, silver. They're playing the games again with the moving day 50 or 200 and 100 day moving average. Uh, as you can tell from this chart right here, it is uh, time to slam below the 100 day moving average, which is $29. They're not getting as much bang for their buck. This is the commercials. We'll know more tomorrow. Last month was kind of, or last week was kind of indifferent. Uh, they're not getting as much bang for their buck, but then again, they don't want run everybody running into silver. So it's very important that they keep the price as low as pro possible. Uh, this is done on the Comex Futures and Options Exchange. We've heard it even from the horse's mouth. The head of the CFTC, Christian Carlo, said in the, in the realm of Bitcoin, we have to get the Bitcoin price under control. We have to pop the bubble. Therefore, we will allow... Um, futures and options to be traded, which is exactly the purpose of futures and options to control the price. Got nothing to do with hedging. It's got nothing to do with a fairly traded market. It is 100% to control the price. And as we've seen, once they did introduce futures and options, uh, the bankers have controlled Bitcoin and pretty much uh, just like they control everything else. Futures and options, it is not a secret. It is not a secret why futures and options uh, are very sparsely regulated. Uh, no, the CFTC has even admitted they are on the side of the shorts to control the prices. Rustin Benham came out. It's the structure of the silver market that was able to tamp down the prices. It's not like they're hiding it. This is obvious to anybody who looks at what is going on in the silver market. Um, people have, were sending me this uh, article. Global Game Changer, Samsung Silver-Based Battery, with a 1,000-mile range and nine-minute charge set to push silver through the roof. Uh, yes, I know it's on InfoWars, but this is actually a battery that Samsung invented. Well, here's the problem. If you throw uh, one of these batteries in every single one of the electrical ve electric vehicles, you're looking at over uh, half a billion ounces of silver used. No, the price would not go up. The price doesn't go up. Price has nothing to do with the physical market. Price has everything to do with the driven market. But what would happen is there would be no silver left. Yes, the price would still be $29, but there would be not be one silver ounce left for purchase. And that's the, the problem. Uh, but there's a bigger problem. Anyway, let's let's listen to what this guy says. It's really interesting. Uh, when he goes on a little rant on InfoWars. And it takes forever to charge it. You can't go on a long road trip with I mean, it's just a pain in the butt, right? So so now I have a big gas guzzling truck and I like it. <laughs> so, so, but, but with this nine minute charge, that's insane. So at one kilo of silver per electric vehicle, the estimated demand will be about 16,000 metric tons of silver just for electric vehicles per year. Okay. Put this into perspective globally. The, the, the mining of silver is 25,000 metric tons. This will take 67% of all the global mining of silver in a year for one application. Well, here's the problem. Obviously, the problem is it's not there. Uh, we are already using over 100% of all silver in other applications. Uh, solar panels being obviously the number one uh, issue problem Um we're going to hit probably in reality. Nobody knows reality because these uh, criminal companies like the Silver Institute, CPM Group, Metals Focus have all lied about how much uh, silver is being used every year. But because we have the uh, direct reporting to government officials of how much solar uh, installations are going in, we have a good idea that the amount of silver used uh, this year will be yeah, probably north of 500 million ounces. So <laughs> you can't have solar taking up 500 million ounces and then all of a sudden uh, electric vehicles taking up 500 million ounces. This is just not possible on a physical side. Now, you can do that on a derivative side because they trade, what, three to 500 billion ounces a year to keep the price where it is. Uh, that's the criminal aspect of what's going on. Uh, one of the main problems 
with price suppression is you have price, uh, you have asset misallocation. And what would happen in what he's saying here with the Samsung batteries, what would happen is, let's just say, oh my God, it's such a breakthrough and it's only 32 ounces of silver at 30 bucks. It's not a lot of money to add to an electric vehicle if it's going to get double the range or triple the range and charge in like nine minutes. That They'd happily add thousands of dollars to a car because they'll sell a hell of a lot of them. But what's going to happen is they're going to find if they try to mass produce this battery, they have to build a facility. Let's just say it's a, a half a billion dollars to build the facility to make these batteries. That's a huge investment for Samsung to make all these batteries. They got to fit the certain sizes of where the application they're going. That's great. That's fine. Um, but the reality is, once they start mass producing them, they will instantly find out, oh my God, we've we've spent a year building this facility. This was supposed to last for 10 years. And all of a sudden, we're two months into it and we can't get any silver at any price. Because it's just not there. It is not available. The physical silver is not available, even though the price is low. And that's a problem. That... The, the misallocation of money, so much or of, of the silver, so much silver has been misallocated into um, solar panels. They're going to be ripping down solar panels off roofs by next year if the price of silver is going to $1,000, 2000 3000 $5,000, you name it. You name the price of silver. And it, no, it's not the, the, the uh, silver stackers doing is 100% doing of the rigors of the silver price. Silver should not be $30 right now. It should be two, $3,000 right now. It should be one-to-one -one with gold because there's the same amount of above-ground gold as there is above-ground silver. And oh, by the way, every ounce we mine of gold goes into, a, into not every ounce, say 95% goes into another vault to just Hold it so that that amount of gold available is growing over time. The amount of silver every ounce is mined is being consumed in solar panels and flat screen TVs and electric cars in regular cars. Over 100 million ounces every year go into the auto sector. And this guy's talking about adding 500 million to EVs. Do you see the problem? And this is why I'm such an advocate of getting your physical silver in your own possession because the, the price might still be $29 but you won't be able to get any at any price because price is determined by a criminal operation <laughs> called the COMEX, Futures and Options. I hope everybody sees this. Everybody knows. This is not a secret anymore. Prices are determined on a derivative market. They call it paper silver, although it's not paper. It probably used to be paper in the early 70s when they started the manipulation of silver after we went, you know, they, they demonetized silver. It didn't start. It started in the 1850s. But they really kicked in with the invention of computers by Alan Greenspan and trading programs to control the prices of everything. And you lap that right on top with a futures and options market where you can sell unlimited amount of silver just to cap the price at times and then cover it later. This is criminality as fine as this is the United States of America. This is going to break very soon. So if you want a day, I got a day for you. Uh, first of all, we're looking at very, very, very stressful times in the commercial real estate business, which is a major part of the banking system. Wells Fargo to sell most of its CRE loan servicing business to Trimont. Wells Fargo agreed to sell most of its commercial mortgage servicing business to Trimont. This is just a sign of the times. You don't want to be anywhere near commercial real estate. There's... There's buildings selling for 25% of what they were selling for not too long ago, just a couple years ago, 25%. And that will hit the, the regular housing. Your house, too, will drop 75% or more. When the banking system freezes up, you know, what's a house worth if you can't get a loan? I don't know. Scrap value? Or just live in it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not... I, Real estate will be a good investment spot when the banks aren't lending money for real estate. And then all of a sudden you can buy a house, a nice mansion for $100,000 uh, worth of silver or whatever we use as the new form of money. If the banks aren't lending, um, good luck out there. And why, why do I keep saying that? 
It gets back to this FDIC meeting held on November 9th, 2022. Listen to this. I posted this on the road to This is the FDIC talking about when they're going to collapse the system. And by the way, they later in the, this discussion, they talk about we have to do it on a three-day weekend. It gives us an extra day. We have a three-day weekend coming up. But listen to what they said. should be accessible when people need to know. But I don't think you have much hope of, of reaching a public that doesn't have a professional need to know. I, I, I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like, my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. So they just assume they're going to pay my claim. Right. It's it's I, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do <laughs> that we want them to have full faith and confidence in the banking system. They know the FDIC insurance is there. They know it works. They put their money in. They're going to get their money out. So there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that will charge them by the hour a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, it, and, it, and it's fine. And I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out in the general public. I wondered whether there are some market tests of whether you're being heard. And I think about TLAC. So TLAC should spread should respond to good and bad news about the institutions. And it's really important. I mean, it's a little bit conflicted, right? I mean, it's important that people understand they can be bailed in, but you don't want a huge run on the institution. But they have, I mean, they're going to be. That's, and, and it could be an early warning signal to the FDIC and the primary regulators when the... <laughs> there you go, my friends. FDIC has no money. They never did. They got like 1%, a little over 1%. The, the reality of the FDIC insurance is a fake insurance policy. It's like uh, companies that, that give uh, earthquake insurance and all of a sudden the big one hits. What do they do? They declare bankruptcy. The FDIC doesn't have the money. They have to go back to Congress. Now, can Congress create the kind of money to bail out the hundreds of, well, I, I don't even know what the, the market cap of FDIC is, it's somewhere in the, I think they insure 17 trillion or something like that. I haven't looked at that in a very long time. Um, first of all, by the way, if you have over $250,000 in, in your bank account, you will lose it. You will lose it. I mean, I, I hope everybody knows that by now. Yes, business checking accounts too. Um, a lot of money has been lost in the past that people don't talk about and will be lost in the lost in the future. Um, you can get around some of that by adding beneficiaries, but it's a little complicated. Go to your bank and say, okay, for, so if you add one beneficiary to your account, uh, that only counts as 250. You're no longer, if there's a beneficiary on there, it doesn't count for you. If you have five beneficiaries, you get, uh, what is that, uh, 1.25 million. So it gets a little complicated. The FDIC even has a website, a calculator for beneficiaries. Uh, it's a big deal if you have over $250,000 in the bank. I don't suggest anybody have over $250,000 in the bank, even business checking accounts. I know people have big expenses they got to pay, but the reality is it's going to be gone. The FDIC does not, does not uh, differentiate between an individual checking account and a business checking account. Those are two separate units, two separate entities. Um, so the people at the FDIC understand later on in this, they say, oh, we got to wait for a three day week and they'll give us more time. And like this guy said, it's going to happen. Listen to what he said again, it's going to happen. The institutions and it's really important. I mean, it's a little bit conflicted, right? I mean, it's important that people understand they can be bailed in, but you don't want a huge run on the institution, but they have, I mean, they're going to be, that's. And, and it could be an early warning signal. They're going to be. They're going to be bailed in. What is bail in? They steal your money. You're, they're telling you. Oh, my God, how obvious can this be? They are telling you, we are going to steal your money. 
It's the only way the banks can survive. So for the overall good of the economic system in, in its entirety, we're going to have to steal your money. It, you do your part as a citizen of the world. Give us your money. It's insane. It's insane. So yeah, get your physical silver in your own possession. Cryptos right now, I'm loving T-Fuel. I mean, we have a big day for T-Fuel coming up. The uh, introducing of the Edge node on I, in any Android device that has... It's got to have some uh, minimum standards, but most... Like phones today and televisions today can will be able to run in September. I don't know if it's the twenty second, near late September. And I've been screaming this for so long. They're gonna download an edge node, a theta edge node, on every single mobile phone on the planet. Right now, it's just the Android devices. It won't be long before all the Apple Mac stuff comes out. Yes. Theta, Theta Fuel are the number one choices for cryptos. I, I, I agree. Bitcoin's going to go crazy. Bitcoin, it's going to be strong. It's going to do nothing compared to what Theta and Theta Fuel are going from where they are right now. Remember, T Fuel's all time high was I think 60 cents, somewhere around there, 60 cents. And now it's trading at 6 cents. So it's a 10x. Bitcoin would have to go from $60,000 to $600,000 to get the 10x. See where the difference is? Um, Theta is also on the, the radar, although right now at 20 to 1, I like T-Fuel better. And there'll be a lot of talk about T-Fuel coming up with the, uh, the announcement that, oh my God, every cell phone on the planet is going to be able to share its data, share its processing power, share its uh, storage capacity, share its broadband. Yeah, it's crazy, I know. I know, I know. Anyway, you heard it here first. Well, maybe not first, but RoadToRua.com. Go check us out. Uh, you want to join the private road, get all the inside info. I think uh, I got Jenny Moonstone tomorrow. I'll find out, confirm that today. But currently, we're giving away 10 Theta, 100 T Fuel, and 1,000 T Drop, all loaded on a paper wallet with every one-year subscription. Uh, click on subscribe today and go check it out. This is Bix. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>